Hi, well, <clears throat> welcome to Book Problems, Atomic Structure. Any notes that you take can be used on your test. So let's get busy. How did Democritus characterize atoms as indivisible and indestructible, atomos? How did Dalton advance the atomic philosophy proposed by Democritus by using experimental methods? That was the big difference. What instrument can be used to observe individual atoms? A scanning, tunneling microscope. In your own words, state the main ideas of Dalton's atomic theory. Answers should include the ideas that all matter is composed of atoms, atoms of different elements differ, and chemical change involves a rearrangement of atoms. That's essentially Dalton's atomic theory. According to Dalton's theory, is it possible to convert atoms of one element into atoms of another element? Atoms of one element are never changed into atoms of another element as a result of chemical reaction. That's an important distinction. When you say chemical reaction, you see, ladies and gentlemen, if I take radioactive hydrogen, uh, hydrogen, uh, deuterium, and I take non-radioactive hydrogen, protium, and I test them chemically, they both are identical. The only difference between radioactive hydrogen and non-radioactive hydrogen, or a radioactive isotope of any kind, and a corresponding non-radioactive isotope, is simply that the radioactive isotope is radioactive, and the non-radioactive isotope is non-radioactive. Chemically, they are identical. He didn't realize at the time, 200 years ago, that you could split the atom and create new atoms, such as uranium. Uranium-235 can be broken down into simpler atoms, simpler elements. So, in terms of, in terms of what he said, he said, chemical reactions. Let's, let's read his answer again and take a look at it from that point of view. He said, atoms of one element are never changed into atoms of another element as a result of chemical reaction. Now, they can certainly be changed as a result of fission or fusion, but in terms of chemical reaction, they can't be changed. And the only difference between two isotopes of the same element is that one is radioactive, possibly, and the other is not radioactive. So they react chemically the same. Water made of deuterium is exactly the same as water made of protium. Protium is the normal everyday hydrogen with an atomic mass of one. So when they say chemical reactions. That's significant. Describe the range of radii of most atoms in nanometers. Nanometers. That's billionth. 5 times 10 to the negative 2 nanometers to 2 times 10 to the negative 1 nanometers. And remember, that's nanometers. A sample of copper has a mass of 63.5 grams. It contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Calculate the mass of a single copper atom. So, we're going to calculate the mass per atom, mass per atom. So, it'll be 63.5 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If you want to think of it in terms of proportional relationships, there it is. So, the mass in grams per atom equals 63.5 uh, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals x over one atom. Now, we're going to solve for x. And we find that x is 1.05 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. So you're setting up a proportional relationship. Don't worry about the dimensional analysis. What are the three types of subatomic particles? This is from last year. You should know this very, very quickly. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Those are the three subatomic particles. How does the Rutherford model describe the structure of atoms. Well, this, the Rutherford model 
looked at a solid center, a positively charged nucleus, the solid center surrounded by electrons, which occupy most of the volume. What are the changes, what are the charges and relative masses of the three subatomic particles? Proton positively charged, relative mass of 1. Electron negatively charged, relative mass of 0, really, 1 over 1840. And then the neutron is a mass of 1 and a charge of 0. Describe Thompson's and Millikan's contribution to atomic theory. Thompson passed an electric charge through sealed glass tubes filled with gases. The resulting glowing beam consisted of tiny negatively charged particles moving at high speed. Thompson concluded that electrons must be parts of the atoms of all elements. Millikan determined the charge and the mass of the electron. Also very important in the physics of electrons was Benjamin Franklin. Compare Rutherford's expected outcome of the gold foil experiment with actual outcome. Rutherford expected all the alpha particles to pass straight through with little deflection. He found that most of the alpha particles passed straight through, but some particles were deflected at very large angles and even bounced straight back, which was in terms of momentum, the size and mass of that nuclear nucleus uh, versus the speed uh, and the momentum involved. That was uh, an extraordinary uh, observation. What experimental evidence led Rutherford to conclude that an atom is mostly empty space? The great majority of alpha particles passed straight through the gold foil or were uh, deflected very, very light, very small, very, in a very small manner. How did Rutherford's model of the atom differ from Thompson's? Rutherford's atomic model described the atom as having a positively charged, dense nucleus that is tiny compared to the atom as a whole. In Thompson's plum pudding model, electrons were stuck in a chunk of positive charge, the plum pudding. All right, here's a, here's a chart, <clears throat> and uh, use a periodic table. So the number of protons for potassium, for instance, would be 19, and then what would have a 5 would be boron, and it would have how many protons? It would have 5, and then sulfur would have 16 atomic, 60 protons, and at ground state, it would have 16 electrons. And then vanadium would have 23 protons, so its atomic number would be 23. And at ground state, it would have 23 electrons. Remember, ground state is when the protons and electrons are equal. How many protons and electrons are in each atom? Again, use the periodic table. The atomic number of fluorine, so it would be 9 and 9. Uh, so this is, remember, it says atom. So when it says atom, it's ground state 2020. For, for calcium, uh, when it says ion, then it's something quite a little different. We'll talk about that this chapter and next. And then 13 to 13 for aluminum. Use table 2 to express the composition of each atom in shorthand. Well, carbon 12 would be uh, 12 over 6 because it has a mass of 12 and a uh, number, uh, atomic number of 6. Fluorine would be 19 over 9. You don't really need table two. Well, table two is the periodic table, but you know some of these should be very familiar to you. Nine over four for beryllium, the atomic number is four. The mass number, that's the rounded whole number uh, from the periodic table. That's how they get that. You just round it. The three isotopes of oxygen are oxygen 16, 17, and 18. Write a symbol for each, including the atomic number and mass number. So 16 over 8, 17 over 8, and 18 over 8. Very, very straightforward. Number 20, we're up to 20 already. Three isotopes of chromium are chromium 50, 52, and 53. How many neutrons are in each isotope given the chromium has an atomic number of 24? So you're just simply going to subtract 50 minus 24, 52 minus 24, and 53 minus 24 because the, the mass number is the protons plus uh, neutrons. So... 50 minus 24 would be 26. 52 minus 24, there's 26, that's the number of neutrons. And then 28, add 2, and then add one more, 29. Okay, next. 
Boron has two isotopes, boron 10 and 11, which is more abundant given the atomic mass of boron is 10.81. Well, this is very qualitative. Uh, you can see that it would be much closer to boron 11, so that's going to be the dominant isotope. There are three isotopes of silicon. They have mass numbers of 28, 29, and 30. The atomic mass of silicon is nearly just 28. Comment on the relative abundance of these three isotopes. Silicon-28 must be by far the most abundant. The other two isotopes must be present in very, very small, very small amounts. Okay. The element copper has naturally occurring isotopes with mass numbers of 63 and 65. The relative abundance and atomic masses are 69.2% for the mass 62.93 AMU and 30.8% for mass 64.93 AMU. Calculate the average atomic mass of copper. So you want to assume 100 total atoms. So you have a random selection of 100 total atoms of this particular element. Now, 69.2 atoms of this random selection have a mass of 62.93 AMUs and 30.8 atoms have a mass of 64.93 AMUs. So what I want to do is I want to find the total mass of all 100 atoms. So that's what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply uh, the, the, the number of atoms of 62.93 by 69.2 and the same for the 64.93. So there you have the values. Okay, so, so 69.2 atoms have a mass of 62.93 and 30.8 atoms have a mass of 64.93. Now, I'm going to find an average. Now, you know how to find an average. It's the total divided by the number of articles contributing to that total. So, the total mass of 100 atoms given the certain percentages, etc., will be, the total absolute mass is going to be 6354.6. Now, I'm going to divide that by 100, because that's going to be the average. So, if I divide by 100, it will be 63.55. And that will be the average atomic mass of copper. So the average atomic mass of copper is 63.55. Get it? 63.55. Or rounded to one decimal place, like the book does, 63.6 AMUs, atomic mass units. Calculate the the atomic mass of bromine, the two isotopes of bromine, have an atomic mass, have atomic masses and relative abundance of 78.92 AMUs, 50.69%, and 80.92 AMUs, 49.3%, and the average atomic mass will be calculated the same way I just calculated it for copper, 79.91 AMUs, and that would be the answer if you did it exactly the same way, it's a, it's a technique that works every single time, every time. What distinguishes the atoms of one element from the atoms of another element? The number of protons defines the element as an individual element. Atoms of different elements contain different number of protons, so don't look any farther than the number of protons for distinguishing one element from another. What equation tells you how to calculate the number of neutrons in an atom? Well, it will be the mass number minus the atomic number. Simple. Mass number minus the atomic number. Write that down. Mass number minus atomic number equals number of neutrons. Let's take a break. You'll never know I was gone. How do the isotopes of a given element differ from one another. How do they differ from one another? Well, 
one element differs from another element, number of protons. With isotopes, it's the uh, number of neutrons. They have different mass numbers and different numbers of neutrons. Elements, protons, isotopes, neutrons. How is atomic mass calculated? Well, I kind of showed you before relative to the uh, multiplying the abundances by each isotope and then finding the average. For each isotope, multiply the atomic mass by its percent abundance, then add the products and divide by the number of components. And that's like any average. What makes the periodic table such a useful tool? You have a, you have a year for me to explain it to you. Uh, it's organized, uh, and it allows you to compare the properties of the elements just by looking at their position on the table uh, relative to one another, uh, and why one is on one side of the table, one is on the other side of the table. Its particular position helps out. What does the number represent in the isotope platinum-194? That's the mass number. Uh, and then you would put that in the numerator and you would put in the denominator, or the subscript for the symbol, you would put the uh, atomic number. And I'll show you that in the next slide. Uh, so 194 would be the mass number, and then 78 would be the atomic number, and that's how you write them. That's how you write uh, the shorthand version of the symbol, etc., uh, where you have the mass number as the superscript, and the subscript is the number of protons or the atomic number. It's actually the charge, but we don't put the positive uh, number there, the positive thing there. However, uh, if you're looking at protons and electrons, you do actually put the negative and the positive in as the charge. There it's required. But um, remember, that's actually a charge. Okay, so you're going to put the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for each pair of isotopes based upon this, the shorthand version. So uh, let's let's uncover these rather quickly. Okay. All right. Hold on. Well, it'd be three protons because it's lithium. Uh, three, twenty, twenty, thirty-four, thirty-four because that's the atomic number and the protons is equal to the atomic number. And then you subtract that and uh, from the uh, mass number and you get the number of uh, neutrons. The number of electrons, this will be ground state, so that'll be equal to the number of protons. Very simple. Uh, how do you know it's ground state? Because uh, they're atoms. Atoms are ground state, ions are not ground state. Name two elements that have properties similar to those of the element calcium. Well, there would be elements that are near calcium in the periodic table. Uh, so any two, beryllium, magnesium, strontium, barium, uh, Radium, those are in that same column. What is an atom? What is an atom? Interesting. Uh, an atom, the smallest part of an element, that still has the properties of that element. We almost didn't define element, did we? Uh, but that's what an, ele an atom is. What were the limitations of Democritus's idea about atoms? Well, he didn't have, uh, he didn't have the, uh, the experimental methods and the instrumentation to help discover uh, additional things about the atom. Uh, with which of these statements would John Dalton have agreed in early 1800s? For each explained why or why not, with which of these statements would John Dalton have agreed in early 1800s? Atoms are the smallest particles of matter. The mass of an iron atom has different, is different from that of a copper atom. Every atom of silver is identical to every other atom of silver. And lastly, a compound is composed of atoms of two or more different elements. Which ones would he agree with? Well, he would agree with all of them. Uh, they would be consistent with his own theory uh, of the atom, his own atomic theory. Use Dalton's atomic theory to describe how atoms interact during a chemical reaction. They, the atoms are separated, joined, and rearranged. Uh, and that's exactly what we understand to be today. What experiment, experimental evidence did Thomson have for each statement? Electrons have 
a negative charge. What is the evidence of his plum pudding model? Electrons have a negative charge. A beam of electrons is deflected by an electric field toward the positively charged plate. Atoms of all elements contain electrons. They all contain electrons. So what, what's the story? The cathode rays were always composed of electrons regardless of the metal used in the electrodes or the gas used in the cathode ray tube. So uh, he didn't see any real difference between them. Would you expect two electrons to attract or repel each other? Well, <clears throat> as a young person, you know that opposites attract and like charges repel, so it would be a repel. Just from your own experience, your own field experience as a kid in school, uh, learning in school, uh, like charges repel. How do the charge and mass of a neutron compare to the charge and mass of a proton? Well, same mass, however, the neutron is neutron, neutral, neutral. The mass of the proton and neutron are equal. Protons are positively charged, and neutrons are neutral. Neutrons are neutral, neutral neutrons. Why does it make sense that if an atom loses electrons, it is left with a positive charge? Because the number of protons are, are not going to change. Atoms are neutral. Number of protons equals number of electrons. Loss of an electron means that the number of protons is greater than the number of electrons. So the remaining particle is positively charged. Describe the location of the electrons in Thompson's plum pudding model of the atom. Where are they? The atoms were stuck in a lump of positive charge. They were stuck in a lump. I've never had plum pudding. How did the results of Rutherford's gold foil experiment differ from his expectations? How did they differ? Because he wasn't quite sure or did he expect the alpha particles to be deflected at a large angle. He didn't realize the nucleus was so dense, so incredibly dense, and so positively charged. Uh, what is the charge, positive or negative, of the nucleus of every atom? It's positive. It's called the nuclear charge. That's where the protons are. Neutrons don't have any charge, so the protons do, so it would be positively charged. So the nuclear charge is always positive. In the Rutherford atomic model, which sub-atomic particles are located in the nucleus? In the Rutherford atomic model. Protons and neutrons. Rutherford suspected there was something in the nucleus in addition to protons, but he didn't know them as neutrons. That was that came later in the evolution of the uh, atomic model. Why is an atom especially electrically neutral? It has equal numbers of protons and electrons. This is the ground state. Why is an atom electrically neutral? It has equal numbers of protons and electrons. What does the atomic number of each atom represent? represents its identity, its number of protons, its, its identity, the number of protons in the nucleus. So every element has a unique number of protons. They can have the same number of neutrons or electrons at one time or another, but protons are special. How many protons are in the nuclei of the following atoms? Well, you've got to look at your periodic table. You see phosphorus. Its atomic number is 15. So it would have, I would guess, 15 protons. And in the ground state, 15 electrons. Let's continue. Molybdenum, again look at the periodic table, 42. Aluminum, 13. Again, look at your periodic table. Cadmium, 48. Chromium, 24. Lead, 82.
periodic table. What is the difference between the mass number and the atomic number? The number of neutrons. The number of neutrons. The number of neutrons. The atomic number is the number of protons. The mass number is the sum of the protons and neutrons. So the difference is the number of neutrons. That is what the question asked. Not what is in each, or what each means, but the difference. Name two ways that isotopes of elements differ. Name two ways that isotopes of an element differ. Well, they're not different, uh, other than the mass number, atomic masses, number of neutrons, relative atomic abundance. Chemically, they are identical. They are identical. Complete the following table by referring to figure 411 on page 118, the periodic table. Again, the periodic table you need. Notice how protons and neutrons are written. Okay, so that's fluorine. So we did number 9, 14. How many neutrons? 15. That tw equals 29, and it's silicon. 22 is the atomic number. So 22 and 26 would be 48. 22 is the number of protons, atomic number. Titanium, J, would be 25, would be the atomic number. And what, what element is that? Manganese, manganese. How can there be more than 1,000 different atoms when there are only 100 different elements because of isotopes? because of the existence of isotopes. An isotope is a difference. I mean, there's a difference between protium, deuterium, and tritium. There are differences among them. Sorry, not between them, among them. But uh, they're because of neutrons and nothing else. What data must you know about the isotopes of an element to calculate the atomic mass of the element? Which isotope exists? Their masses and their natural percent abundance. Next, how is the average mass different from the weighted average uh, mass? The weighted average mass. Mm, interesting. Average atomic mass is the arithmetic mean of the isotope. Weighted average atomic mass considers both the mass and the relative abundance of isotopes. What is the atomic mass of an element? What is the atomic mass of an element? That's the atomic mass is the weighted average of the masses of all the isotopes, of all the isotopes. How are the elements arranged in the modern periodic table as opposed to the classical? Can you count? No. It's atomic number, or according to the number of protons that are unique in each element, or putting it a different way, according to their atomic numbers. Look up the word periodic in the dictionary. Propose a reason for naming, for the naming of the periodic table. Well, the properties of elements are repeated in a periodic fashion. The table is set up so that chemical properties of elements recur at regular intervals or at periods. Characterize the size of an atom. Well, an atom is very small. Much of its volume, however, is empty space and created by an electron cloud. Very, very tiny, but larger than protons or electrons, or both of them together. I'm not quite sure the grammar is correct there. Compare the size and density of an atom with its nucleus. Nuclear material is among the densest in the universe, but the atom is not so dense. It's mostly empty space. The nucleus is very small and very dense compared with the atom. Again, the atom is mostly empty space, as Rutherford discovered. Imagine you are standing on the top of a boron-11 nucleus. Describe the number and kinds of subatomic particles you would see looking down into the nucleus and those you would see looking out from the nucleus. 
I'd see five protons and six neutrons in the nucleus and five electrons outside the nucleus. Remember, it's an atom. Atoms are ground state, equal number of protons and neutrons. What parts of Dalton's atomic theory no longer agree with the current picture of the atom? All atoms of the same element are not identical, isotopes. The atom is not, the atom is not the smallest particle of matter. Millikan measured the quantity, the quantity, I was about to say quality, Millikan measured the quantity of charge carried by an electron. How did he then calculate the mass of the electron? He used the quantity of charge value and the charge to mass ratio measured by Thompson. Even though Thompson got the model a little bit incorrect, he, he understood charge to mass ratio. How is the number of electrons in an atom of a given element related to the atomic number of that element? They're equal in ground state. They are the same value, or they are equal. Or you might want to say equivalence, equal and opposite. Again, atom is ground state. How is the atomic mass of an element calculated from isotope data? How is the atomic mass of an element calculated from isotope data? The masses of isotopes in a sample of the element are averaged based on relative abundance. The result is the, is the element's atomic mass. The four isotopes of lead are shown below each with its percent by mass abundance and the composition of the nucleus. Using these data, calculate the approximate, the approximate atomic mass of lead. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do this approximately the same way we did the last one. The math may look a little different, but it's the same thing. I want to calculate the total, I want to calculate the total mass of all 100 atoms. Assume 100 random atoms with the percentages listed to the right. With the percentages listed to the right. So, what do I do? Well, I multiply 204 by 1.4 and that's 285.6. That's the mass of that many, of that isotope and 206 times 24.1, then I'm going to do 22.1 times what? Times 207, 22.1 times 207, that's 4574.7, and then the last one, the big one, is going to be 208 times 52.4, 10,899 and two tenths, add it all up, total mass, the total mass, I'm going to add up, the total mass of 100 atoms of the isotopes, 100 atoms of isotopes, should be an S there, would be 207241 or 207.241. That would be the average atomic mass. And that would be what you'd report on a periodic table. The book, I think, just says 207, but I'm, I'm counting the decimals because oftentimes students, knowing what a mass number is in protons and neutrons, that, that's where you get the decimal. So the answer is 207, and that's what the book reports, 207. But it's better to understand that the 207 is actually a decimal, and that's where the decimal comes from. Dalton's atomic theory was not correct in every detail. Should this be taken as a criticism of Dalton as a scientist? No. Dalton worked with what he had. In general, he proposed a valid theory in line with the experimental evidence available to him. If he said something preposterous at that time based on what he had, then it, he, you could criticize it, but not given what he observed experimentally. Why are atoms considered the basic building blocks of matter, even though smaller particles, such as protons and electrons exist. Atoms are the smallest particle of an element that retains the properties of that element. Scorch that into your brain. Atoms are the smallest particle of the element that retain the properties of the element. 
The following table shows some of the data collected by Rutherford and his colleagues during their gold foil experiment. So there's the angles, and then it says what percentage of alpha particles deflected were 5 degrees or less. And that's 5 degrees, 15 degrees, etc. Let's look at this a little bit more closely. So what I did was I added up the total total collisions, 8, 9, 2, 2, 2, 6, 1, that's the total collisions. And then I summed all the collisions, 5 degrees or less, 15 degrees or less, and then 60 degrees or greater. And then I divided the sum at each degree by the sum of all collisions, multiplied by 100, and I came up with the percentages. So 82890000 divided by 89222261 times 100 would be 92.902. And the sum of collisions at 15 degrees or less, 8,912,140 divided by 8,922,000. 1,261 times 100 would be uh, 99.887, etc. So the way I got this information was I divided the sum of collisions at 5 degrees by the total, the total sum of all collisions times 100, etc. for each one. And what was unique, what was amazing, was that they were mostly going through empty space, obviously from the, the percent of deflections that were five degrees or less, it was mostly empty space, and that the nucleus exerted great power uh, by having the same charge as the alpha particle, thereby deflecting it because of opposite charge. And then in terms of total change in momentum, when something would be deflected directly back, it was uh, amazing to Rutherford. He equated it to an artillery shell hitting a piece of tissue paper and bouncing straight back at the source of the, the artillery shell, which would be the cannon. So it was pretty amazing. It was a pretty amazing experiment. And it demonstrated two things, the size and denseness of the nucleus, and that the atom is mostly empty space. So Rutherford's experiment was critical. And here I have what percentage of alpha particle deflections were five or less, five degrees or less, what percentage of the deflections were 15 or less, what percentage of deflections were 60 or greater, and listed in that table are the answers. I just used an Excel spreadsheet, uh, made some equations, and uh, made the calculations via the Excel spreadsheet, which I posted several slides earlier uh, that I spoke about in great length. So what percentage of deflections were greater than 60 degrees, uh, or 60 degrees or greater? And that's 0 0.00. 993%. Using the data for nitrogen listed in table 4.3, calculate the weighted average atomic mass of nitrogen. Show your work. Okay, here's the table. Uh, and then, uh, then you'll do the calculation. But I'm not going to do the calculation. I want you to do the calculation. And we'll show that in class. I'll do that in class. Just remind me. Uh, what characteristic of cathode rays led Thompson to conclude that the rays consisted of negatively charged particles? They were attracted to a positively charged plate. They were attracted to a positively charged plate. If you know the atomic number and mass number of an atom of an element, how can you determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in that atom? 
Atomic number is the same as the number of protons and electrons. Mass number minus atomic number equals the number of neutrons, and we've said that before. It's starting to sound a little bit like a broken record. What makes isotopes of the same element chemically alike? What makes isotopes of the same element chemically alike? They're all chemically alike because they have identical number of protons. They also have identical number of electrons. Electrons are the subatomic particles that are responsible for chemical behavior. Now remember, atoms. Atoms have the same number of protons and electrons. In the periodic table, what happens to the pattern of properties within a period? When you move from one period to the next, the pattern repeats. So period two, period three, etc. The pattern repeats. Okay. Here's Rutherford's uh, experiment. Here's a, you can see that uh, <clears throat> most of the uh, it's not a very good example, but you know the diagram below shows the shows gold atoms being bombarded with fast moving alpha particles. Okay, so that's what we see. The large yellow spheres represent gold atoms. What do the gray spheres represent? The nucleus of an atom. The little tiny gray spheres in the middle, those are the nuclei of the atoms. List at least two characteristics of the small gray spheres. Two characteristics. I'll let you do this. Small gray spheres. Two. I need two. Very small. Almost all the mass of the atom. And high density. Positive charge as well. So these are things that Rutherford said must be true. Which subatomic particle cannot be found in the area represented by the gray spheres? Which subatomic particle cannot be found? The electron. The electron orbits the nucleus. Most of the volume of the atom is due to the orbiting electron and the cloud it creates. How could you modify Rutherford's experimental procedure to determine the relative size of different nuclei? To determine the relative sizes of different nuclei. Change the metal used as a target and account for differences in deflection patterns. You'd have to do an awful lot of deflection patterns in order to get a quality sample. Rutherford's atomic theory proposed a dense nucleus surrounded by very small electrons. This implies that atoms are composed mainly of empty space. If all matter is mainly empty space, why is it impossible to walk through walls or pass your hand through your desk? The following are reasonable hypotheses. The space in an individual atom is large relative to the volume of the atom, but very small relative to an object the size of a hand. There are many layers of atoms in a wall or a desk. The space that exists is distributed evenly throughout the solid similar to the distribution of air pockets in foam insulation. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Curious. Why can't you walk through walls? Well, there are some hypotheses. This chapter illustrates the scientific method in action. What happened when new experimental results cannot be explained by the existing theory? Well, you have to modify the theory, build new models. The theory must be modified and then retested. Build new models. What? Build a model that's consistent with the new data. Do you think there are more elements left to be discovered? From my point of view, from the teacher's point of view, absolutely. As long as there's testing, uh, there will be possibilities. It's only when we stop testing that the possibilities will cease to exist. The law of conservation of mass was introduced in chapter 2. 
use Dalton's atomic theory to explain this law. Well, the law of conservation of mass was introduced prior to Einsteinian physics and splitting the atom, however, in a chemical change, chemical change. Atoms are not created or destroyed, they are rearranged in a chemical change. In a chemical change. Diamond and graphite are both composed of carbon atoms. The density of diamond is 3.52 grams per cubic centimeter. The density of graphite is 2.2 grams per cubic centimeter. In 1955, scientists successfully made diamond from graphite. Use the relative densities. Using the relative densities, imagine what happens at the atomic level when this change occurs. Then suggest how this synthesis may have been accomplished. Very interesting. Very curious, as they say when the plot's about to thicken. Because diamond is more dense than graphite, pressure could be used to squeeze the carbon atoms closer together and change uh, it into tetrahedral bonding structures, essentially. Lithium has two naturally occurring isotopes. Lithium-6 has an atomic mass of 6.015 AMUs. Lithium-7 has an atomic mass of 7.016 AMUs. The atomic mass of lithium is 6.941 atomic mass units. What is the percentage of naturally occurring lithium-7 to be done in class? When the masses of the particles that make up an atom are added together, the sum is always larger than the actual mass of the atom. The missing mass, called the mass defect, represents the matter converted into energy when the nucleus was formed from its component protons and neutrons. Calculate the mass defect of chlorine-35 atom by using the data in table 4-1. The actual mass of chlorine-35 atom is 5.81 times 10 to the negative 3 grams. That's the mass of one chlorine-35 atom. And this will be done in class. We'll do this in class, but first we'll look at table one, just to look at it. Okay, properties of some atomic particles. That is table, that is table one. Properties of subatomic particles. How does the goal of pure chemistry compare with that of applied chemistry? Pure and applied chemistry, IUPAC. International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Pure chemistry involves the accumulation of scientific knowledge for its own sake. Applied chemistry is accumulating knowledge to attain a specific goal. A specific goal. How does the scientific law differ from a scientific theory? How does a scientific law differ from a scientific theory? Scientific theory attempts to explain why experiments give certain results. Scientific law describes a natural phenomena, but does not explain it. Interesting. Classify each as an element, compound, or mixture. Classify each as an element, compound, or... Okay, sulfur. Elements. Sulfur is definitely an element. Salad oil is a mixture. Newspaper is a mixture. Orange is a mixture. Oxygen and hydrogen react explosively to form water. In one reaction, 6 grams of hydrogen combines with oxygen to form 54 grams of water. How much oxygen is used based on the conservation of... the conservation of mass. So it would be... 48, because 6 and 48 is 54. That's based on the conservation of mass. Okay, so if you look at that, uh, hydrogen in water, or 6 plus 48 equals 54. An aquarium measures 54 by 31 by 380 centimeters. How many cubic centimeters of water will this aquarium hold? This is a little bit of a review from the last chapter. You do your dimensional analysis and Add everything up, and you get 6.38 times 10 to the 7th cubic centimeters. 
what is the mass of 4.42 cubic centimeters of platinum? The density of platinum is 22.5 grams per cubic centimeter. So mass equals density times volume, and that's 99.5 grams, 99.5 grams. I have to get ready for homeroom in a moment, but let's see if we can uh, finish up the next couple. Select the choice that best answers each question or completes each statement. Select the choice that best answers each question or completes each statement. This is the chapter test, the practice chapter test. An atom composed of 16 protons, 16 electrons, and 16 neutrons is a... an atom. 16 protons. Yeah, that's right. It would be sulfur because... 16 protons, but would it be A? Hmm. 48's a little weird, huh? So it would have to have 16 in the denominator, which A does, but 48, is that correct? What would be the mass number of sulfur? Isn't it the protons and neutrons? So it's definitely not B. It's either A or C. That's obvious because of the 16. So, let's see. What 16 protons and 16 neutrons would be? 32, so the answer would be C. So it's certainly not B, that's germanium. That's kind of out there. 16 protons. Okay. Which list contains elements that fall within the same group on the periodic table? Which list contains elements that falls within the same group on the periodic table? Well, I think that's the answer, because those are all noble gases, and they, those are all in the group called noble gases. Oxygen, fluorine, and neon are in three separate groups, calcogens, halogens, and noble gases. So it looks like it's going to be A so far. Potassium, rubidium, those are in the same group, but barium is in group two. They're not the same. Okay. Alkali metals versus alkali earth metals, so C is not correct, B is not correct. Hydrogen, helium, nope, they're two different sides of the periodic table, so the answer is definitely A. The answer would be 2A, right? And that's the answer, 2A. Which of these descriptions is incorrect? Which one of these descriptions is incorrect? A. Proton positively charged in nucleus mass of approximately 1 AMU. Electron negative charge mass of approximately 0 AMUs in the nucleus. Neutron mass of approximately 1 AMU. No charge. And it would be A. Proton positive charge in nucleus mass of approximately 1 AMU. Thallium has two isotopes, thallium 203, 205. Thallium's atomic number is 81, and its atomic mass is 204.38. Which statement about thallium isotopes is true? There is more thallium 203 in nature. Atoms of both isotopes have 81 protons. Thallium 205 atoms have fewer neutrons. The most common atom of thallium has a mass of 204.38, and it is that atoms of both isotopes have 81. And that's the best answer, actually, the best answer there is, because they're definitely going to have that many protons because they're both isotopes of thallium. How many nitrogen-14 atoms would you need to place on the right pan to balance the three calcium-42 atoms on the left pan of the atomic balance below. Describe the method you use to determine your answer, including any calculations. Well, you would need three nitrogens to balance the one calcium. Three times 14 is 42. And so you would have, uh, if you have uh, it says, how many, nit how many nitrogen-14s would you need to balance on the right pan if you had three calciums? So you're going to need three for every one. So if you have three, you have nine. Three times three is nine. So, and there's a little bit more of the answer there. Okay. 
Which of the following statements about the periodic table are correct? 1. Elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic mass. 2. A period is a horizontal row. Or 3. The properties of the elements within a period vary from element to element. Okay. Which ones are true? Which ones are correct? Okay. A. One only. One and two only, or one, two, and three, or one and three, or two and three. And the answer is two and three. For each question below, there are two statements. Decide whether each statement is true or false. Then decide whether statement two is a correct explanation for statement one. Every aluminum 27 atom has 27 protons and 27 electrons. Well, a lot of that's not true because the mass number of aluminum is 27. I'm not sure what that all means, but statement one is definitely false. And if you're playing Jeopardy, where you're given the answer and you don't know what the question is, uh, statement two is definitely true, but um, not to that question. Um, isotopes of an element have different atomic masses. That's actually quite true. Isotopes of an element have different atomic masses because the nuclei of an element's isotopes contain different number of protons. That's actually quite false. It would be neutrons. So that's true, and the statement two would be false. And it's false. Next. Next, we have a, uh, Mr. Brian is here observing. Uh, we have guest here. An electron is repelled by a negatively charged particle. That's actually quite true. And Mr. Brian thinks so too because an electron has a negative charge. That's actually very, very, very true. So we've got two trues for the last one because an electron has a negative charge. So I think that's going to be true, 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 true. And then, to finish, we will say it is a correct explanation as well. Hey, it's been fun, and good luck on your test that you probably have already taken by the time you listen to this or watch this, and goodbye.